to getting APIs to work. This is my YouTube channel on anything that has to do with APIs and today I want to talk about web concepts. So what is web concepts? Web concepts is a website I've been working on for quite a while, always a little side project that I had and I want to encourage you to explore it a little bit and maybe see what you can do with it. So web concepts lives at webconcepts.info and what I want to do today is to walk you through the site briefly, show you what's on it, maybe inspire you to look at it and see what you can do with it. And if you have any interest in actually doing something with it and you're wondering how it works, let me know in the comments and I will produce another video that explains a little bit more how it actually works right now. Today I only want to show you how it looks like and what's in there. I won't go into any details of how it's implemented. If you want to read more about the site and the idea, here's a paper presentation that is linked from the, the homepage of webconcepts.info. That's a paper I published about two years ago about web concepts. But enough of all of that, let's, let's dive in. So what is web concepts? The idea is the web is made up of all these building blocks. It's made up of many different standards that all together tell you how do different peers on the web talk to each other? So for example, HTTP is one of the really, really important core standards and it defines a lot of things, but there's many other standards that also define things that might be interesting. And that if you find them and if you know about them, you don't have to reinvent and people know how it works and maybe tooling can support it and so forth. Let's look at an example. If we look at the concepts on this website, I have identified 35 different concepts that matter for web architecture and APIs. So one of them is HTTP header fields. So when we look at HTTP header fields, a whole bunch of them are defined by HTTP itself, but there's also header fields that are defined in separate um, specifications. So if we go here, and actually you might find it surprising how many header fields there are, but there are 205 different HTTP header fields that are defined in some standard and some shape or form. Of course, there's even more when you look at the specific ones that some APIs just use without having a proper specification for them. To give you an example of a header field that's not an HTTP itself, I'll show you one that I defined um, and that was published as an RFC a little while ago. That was sunset, right? So the sunset header field is a header field that allows you to publish information about when a resource will go offline. So it could be a way how you can announce that your API, for example, will be shut down at some point in time and anybody listening would be able to look at the sunset header field and if that header field shows up and has a certain date in it, then it could raise an alarm, it could write notifications into a log, whatever you want to do, but the client would have a machine readable representation of the fact that the API announces that it's going to go down. So if you look at this, the way web concepts work is it keeps track of all these standards. So in this case, the standard is RFC 8594. That's the title of the standard. And then down here, you see that this standard doesn't do much. It only defines the HTTP header field sunset and also defines a link relation sunset, but that's all it does. So that's a small building block. Let's look at a really big one. So HTTP itself. So where do we have one that is defined in HTTP itself? Here, refer up. So that is a header field that is part of HTTP itself. If we look at this specification, it's the title of the spec, the number abstract, and then you see here are all the header fields defined in the HTTP standard or this HTTP standard now that there's more of them. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of them. And also this specific document defines certain request methods, it defines status codes and so forth. So what you see here is each of these specification documents decomposed into the concepts that it defines. And then you can go into the individual ones, let's say, accept. And for each of those concepts that exist, there is a specific page on web concepts that 
contains the specification text basically and links back to the standard. So you can always just um, go here and go to the standard and then you can go to the RFC itself and so forth. So everything is interlinked, of course, because everything should be interlinked on the web, right? And that is how web concepts works. So just a second example here, the status codes, right? You can go in, how many status codes are there? Again, probably for most of you, a surprising number of status codes, 63. And again, you can either go and find the status codes. Let's find a fun one, actually. I think I, I put it in here because apparently I don't have anything better to do. Um, where is it? Here. The I am a teapot <laughs> status code. Right? So uh, the, the IETF April 1st always publishes RFCs that are April 1st RFCs. And at one point they published this one, the Hypertext Coffee Pot Control Protocol. And that one defined two things that actually are now web standards, the accept additions header field, which allows you to say that you want sugar or milk in your coffee or tea. And the status code that tells you I'm a teapot. So, of course, that's a joke. But as you can see, everything here is nicely decomposed into these individual concepts. Now, I don't want to spend too much time going through all of these. What I want to tell you is that this is a big repository and set of building blocks of how you can talk about a a foundation for APIs that you're building. So my vision of this was always that it's it's on GitHub, It's everybody can just take it, fork it, change it, whatever. Again, I can explain in more detail how it works, um, how it works if necessary. Everybody can take it and then they can strip out what they don't like and come up with those standards that they think would be useful for them and use those as a starting point, for example, for their own API guidelines and say, look, these are the 35 web standards that we want to use because we think these are useful concepts. If you want to design APIs, please have a look through those 35 standards and the concepts they define so that you understand what is the basic vocabulary we start with so that, for example, if you want to design a mechanism such as Sunset, where an API can announce that is going out of business, that instead of designing that yourself, you would know and easily use the fact that, oh, there's a standard for that, I can just use that. So right now, when you look at the specifications that are in there, because I spend quite a bit of my time following specifications, sometimes writing specifications, it's part of my professional life. And right now there's quite a number of specifications in here. There's 292 different specifications from a variety of organizations, five organizations right now. And these define a good bunch of concepts, around 800. And again, I think the most interesting thing would be to think about, take this Remove everything you don't like and then keep what you like and use it as a, as a starting point for your own API design practice, saying this is what we want to work with. Let's all agree that this is a useful subset. That is step one. And then step two, which I think would also be very nice, would be to say, and now, if there's additional things we want to do where there is no standard, we just add our own standards. There's nothing in here that would prevent you to add your own, so to speak, specifications to this and say, because we have certain needs that we don't see are addressed by any of the standards out there, we write our own standards. They don't need to be formal standards, just in your organization, this is how we do this and this is how we do that. And then you can add that as well. So you could not just take this set of concepts that are established standards that you want to work with, but you could also say, 
And here are some additional concepts that we use in our organization because we use, we need these concepts all the time and we think we should all use them in a consistent way. And then you have your own in-house standards. So that really is my, my hope, so to speak, what people would use or would, uh, would do with, with web concepts. They would just take it, strip parts of it, add their own stuff, and then just happily walk away and have something to work with. And that's really all that I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to introduce you briefly to web concepts, talk a little bit about what it is, what it can be useful for, how you can use it. So right now, again, it's just this website. This website is generated from a repository that lives on GitHub. Feel free to check it out. And again, if you want to do any of the things that I was just talking about, drop me a note, write a comment, that would be the best thing, or get in touch in any other way. And I'll be more than happy to produce another video where I will explain a little bit more how this site currently works so that if you really want to do what I was just talking about, you would know how it works and it would be easy for you to start using it in the way that you want to. Oh, one last thing, I'm sorry. If all you want is the data that is in concepts and you don't want to use the data and publish your own site, so to speak, there's one view that might be good enough for you. It's the JSON view. So just click on JSON up there. And then up here, you'll find actually, I think a pretty okay um, documentation of how the concept data, for example, is available in JSON. So all the data right now is managed. That's a little, I have to admit it, is managed in XML because I'm, I'm an XML guy. But as part of generating the site, I also generate JSON. So all the data is also available in JSON. And if all you're interested in is the core data, then you can get both the specification data and the concept data in two rather large JSON files. And the structure of the JSON is all documented here. So if that's all that you want to do, you can just take that and walk away. And hopefully that's useful for you as well. Okay, now I'm really done. Thanks a lot for listening. I hope you'll tune in again. Please subscribe to the channel and see you soon. Bye.